role um, values can play and should play within education. And of course, part of the context of that is what's going on specifically today, although maybe it's always been a, a factor within the world. And you have people such as the, uh, the famous Huntington with his clash of civilizations idea, we which seems that within the same. idea of globalization and different people and countries and ways of thinking coming across and against each other. And of course, that's all exacerbated by internet communications, other modern forms of communication technologies, which bring us much closer together to each other than perhaps we were before. So what does that mean for education? What role should education take up in relation to that? What role should values play within So education? a few of the ideas, and we'll touch on some of them. And maybe a, a starting point, just to step back a little bit. Um, I think most people, if you read the newspapers or, or watch the news, there seem to be problems. <laughs> maybe it's partly the media but also perhaps accurately reflecting that there are some major issues that the world is facing. Nevertheless, there are many wonderful things within the world too. And I sometimes like to remind myself of that. It's not all bad. <laughs> there are many good things happening too. And perhaps if you want to take that a little bit further, one might say that to some extent at least, whether there are problems going on or whether there are good things to be found within life and the world, maybe there's a connection with values with that. Maybe some of the problems have their root in questions you could describe as moral issues or questions of values. And when life is good, perhaps we can see that people are living by certain values. And so within that context, education perhaps has a particular role to play, both for the individual to help us develop and realize our potential, the gifts, the abilities that we start off with, we need to develop them, help them mature. And then perhaps our society as a whole. If a society is successful, prosperous, whatever that may mean, then perhaps it needs education to help it achieve that. And so coming back to the individual, the individual can be seen as the, the building block of the, the family. Family, perhaps the smallest sort of collective unit within society, but family is nevertheless made up of, of individuals. So if we want to look at the world in a bigger sense, or our societies or communities, we come back to the families, and then from the families we come back to the individual as the main recipient, if you like, of, of education. And then the role of the teacher within that is essentially a, a formative one, so an analogy that you can perhaps make with a gardener nurturing seeds to help create a nice garden. And taking that as the starting point, then it seems that the role of the teacher within society is a particularly important one. Teachers perhaps could be described as the most important people within our society because they help form what becomes the society of tomorrow. And so the question there, what kind of world would we leave to our children? Well, it depends on the kind of children that we leave to our world. <laughs> if our children don't grow up with the right kind of abilities and qualities and, and values, then we can imagine what the world would be like. So that then, in turn, depends on how we educate them. So the world of tomorrow depends on what we do in classrooms today. And so the role of the teacher, a fundamentally important one, and the role of the teacher in looking at the kind of values which are expressed, which are lived by, to which children are exposed within the classroom. 
And just to take that point and go back to the garden analogy, I think that's a nice one in the, so far as it recognizes that the seed has within it the potential for this flower. But the seed to become that flower needs the right environment in which to flourish and grow. It needs nourishing, it needs watering. But the seed itself is there. And that perhaps suggests something of the relationship between the teacher and the student. A nurturing one, a formative one, but nevertheless it's one of allowing that potential which is inherent to flourish and bloom. Recognizing that each flower is a different flower. You can't make a, a rose um, grow into a rose seed or, or sprout grow into a, uh, an orchid or a, um, a camellia or something else. Each flower is different, each individual is different. And then the role of the teacher is to help each individual child grow to its own particular best potential within its own characteristics. And so looking at that world context, what does education need to do to help prepare for the world of tomorrow, recognizing also the world of, of today, of course, too? Perhaps we can say that education needs to cover a whole range of issues, but that it will not be complete if it doesn't pick up and address some of the questions or values which we need to look at in looking at the society of, of tomorrow and how we would like society to be and how we would like our children to grow up, the kind of world we want them to grow up in. And so we need to look at respect, respect for ourselves, others, our environment, of course, is a hot topic nowadays, and the rights and viewpoints of others. <coughs> Difficult to navigate our way through the world if other people don't have some respect in relation to those things for us, and if we don't have some respect for others. Responsibility. Of course, we have the Declaration of Human Rights, but maybe there's also a declaration, or there could be a Declaration of Human Responsibilities, which I think um, was done actually in Africa some time ago, when they tried to recognize that um, it's not just about our individual rights, but our responsibilities too. How we exercise our freedoms, how we exercise our rights. Integrity being true to ourself. I think it's quite easy to uh, find ourselves not quite sure which path to take in life and, and uh, especially in a, a multicultural kind of context, do we do as the Romans do, as they say, <laughs> adopt the prevalent culture which is around us, or do we stay more deeply rooted in something um, more deeply part of our original or traditional self, if you like. And yet, if we are going to be true to ourselves, then also to our traditions, our culture, our, our own disciplines, whatever they may be. Tolerance, living with others, justice, love, honesty. I think what we're really saying is that all of these things need to be part of a child's experience when growing up. And as a student, we can be exposed to these ideas, to these values, think about them, learn about them, see what part we want them to play in our lives and what role they need to have within society. And so if those kinds of values are important, just in general terms, are those values present within education today? Do children today learn about respect, responsibility, love, honesty, integrity and tolerance. Do students leave school with that kind of um, understanding and, and practice? And on the other side of the coin, what values messages are students exposed to at home? Through advertising on the internet? What place the traditional values have in education today? Today is a very different world from 
the world of a few decades or centuries ago, are some of those values that we talked about, respect, integrity, honesty, and so on, have they become outdated? Has their meaning evolved and changed? Do we need to interpret them differently? And then what role can or should religion play in education? And I mention that because I think religion is often, and perhaps traditionally, has been an important vehicle for conveying moral messages. But yet it's not without controversy, too. And um, the history of colonialism, of course, has, has often been caught up with that. So in today's world, it becomes quite complex to talk about all these things, <laughs> because there are so many different cultures and traditions floating around and intermingling with each other, or potentially, if you want to take that viewpoint, clashing with each other's. Um, and then at the individual level, it's also a little bit complex, because we don't perhaps fit quite so neatly into one simple, simple little package or sense of identity or self. I think Amartya Sen has written quite a lot about the idea of a, a plurality of identities. I am a Chinese person living in France, married to an Irish person. Um, <laughs> I'm working in this particular profession and I have this particular sport and recreational activity and so on. And each of those may be part of my identity, part of how I see and understand myself. And so to what extent do I adopt or live by values which may be associated with each of those different areas? One easy example of that is, is the idea of business ethics. Uh, if I'm a business person, then I should have business ethics. If I belong to a particular religion, then I should have religious ethics. If I'm part of a particular culture, I should have the values of that culture, and, and so on. And how do all of those combine? How do I live coherently and without a sense of confusion in relation to each of those different aspects of, of my identity? Not so easy answers. <laughs> But yeah, just one point there to touch on as well, the last point there. Um, there may be more differences within a group than between one group. So even if I associate myself with a particular culture or part of the world, perhaps even within that group, there can be an enormous amount of difference too. Um, sometimes in this part of the world, people very often say, well, what are Western values? Western values are doing this, that, or the other. I'm not quite sure what Western values are. Um, a, because the West is very mixed and diverse, and, and, and within it, there is a tremendous amount of, of diversity too. So perhaps there is more diversity within that group, Europe, perhaps you might say, than between Europe and Asia. And I think if you look at the, um, at the level of DNA, again, people have found the same. There's more variety within a particular ethnic group than between one group and, and another. So the question of diversity and, um, is not, again, quite as simple as it might seem. Nevertheless, if you look in particular at some of the work of, of the UN, for example, over the last um, well, going back to 1945 or so, the UN Charter, the UN Declaration of Human Rights, and the various other things which are followed on top of that, Convention on the Rights of the Child, Earth Charter, and so on, there have been a whole series of documents which have attracted a lot of universal, or at least common, um, endorsement. So the so-called Universal Declaration of Human Rights, a lot of people agree that there are basic rights that individuals have. Um, Convention on the Rights of the Child, there are certain rights which the child has. The Earth Charter, a lot of people agree that there's a way in which we need to interact with the Earth to respect our, our environment. And so, 
yes, a lot of diversity within the world, but yet there also seems to be quite a lot of consensus or agreement around certain things. Wherever you go in the world, most people don't like it when they are lied to. <laughs> Honesty is valued. People don't like it when they are not respected. So respect is a fairly prevalent value. Love is a fairly widely shared value, and so on. So despite all this enormous diversity, there also seems to be a fairly strong amount of overlap or commonality. A commonality shared across cultures, across religions, across traditions, and also across time, going back hundreds of years. So perhaps there are some values that we can identify that are broadly agreed on. And maybe that ties in with the notion of we all live on one planet, we have one home on Earth. And if you look at the idea of the human race, that suggests that there is one human race rather than many different races. There may be differences, of course, within all of that, but there's also a more deep underlying similarity or commonality, perhaps, too. Our skin colour is different, but the blood is the same colour. Our tears are the same colour, and, and so on. So scratch the surface, and very often you find that there is nevertheless this underlying commonality that is shared. And so as human beings living on this one earth, we are interconnected and we are interdependent with each other. Our contexts may differ, but the issues that we face, the kind of things that we relate to, that we look for, our aspirations, often are very similar. And so perhaps that suggests a way forward for education and for, for values in relation to that. Just very briefly on that, um, these four pillars of education, they were something that were produced in a report done for UNESCO, the Delors Report, in the late 1990s, which was looking at education for the 21st century and suggested that these four pillars were, were crucial for what needed to happen within education. And without going into them in detail, just to touch briefly on the last Two, learning to be, relating to understanding who we are. What does it mean to be a human being? What's the nature of our, our personhood? Education needs to help us understand that more sort of existential question, if you like. And we need to learn to live together with each other. You can look at the broader aspect of cultures, countries, and so on, also at the more small level of cross-disciplinary teams within a working environment. Um, working teams are very often bringing not only disciplines but also people from different countries together. And so a lot of recognition for that dimension of education to be important in the future and today. And then finally, perhaps one can say that the quality of education seems critical if we're going to address some of the world's problems, if we're going to help develop the kind of people that are needed to look at the world and address some of these issues that are out there that we're facing, education needs to be good. And perhaps there's a close connection, even you can say a, like a sort of a double helix between the presence of values within education and quality of education. Good education will have a strong values presence within it. And if there is that good presence of values within education, then it is more likely to be good quality education. And so coming back to values, maybe the question is not so much what kind of values, because there is a fair degree of agreement around some of the issues that we're facing and the kind of values, questions that relate to that. 
But perhaps more important is the question of how do we teach about these values, because that's when we seem to come up into problems. Where do the values come from? OK, we can look at that, but how do we teach them? That seems to be a tougher question. And one of the reasons that's difficult is because it seems to be easy to do too much, to push values down people and to try to convert, if you like, to a particular set of values, to try to insist that they should have or indoctrinate them with a particular values package, or to, on the other hand, do too little and perhaps say, oh, this is all too difficult, I'm just going to teach maths, I'm just going to teach physics, or I'm going to teach language. I'm not going to get involved with, with, with values. That's to be done at home or at the, at the temple or the church or the mosque. That's not my role. I'm just teaching this particular discipline. And if the first approach of indoctrination, of trying to ensure, enforce, impose a particular set on, on values on children, that could be seen as not respectful of their individuality, their own particular set of values, traditions, and their own individual choices. That's the problem with doing too much, if you like. On the other side, doing too little is ignoring all of that. And I think perhaps one can't really, as you come into school, say, well, I'm leaving my values at the door. I'm just here to teach the subject. Um, because what we do when we walk into a classroom is we bring with us our own personality. We bring with us our values, our attitudes and behavior. All of those are an expression of, of underlying values. So we can't just say that education is values neutral. It is by itself values laden. And so maybe what we can do is just propose. We can put forward certain values. Um, we can offer guidance, but we also respect the choice and individuality, the personality of, of each student. Certain values, looking back over time, have achieved a lot of endorsement and recognition. Certain values today attract a lot of endorsement across cultures, across boundaries, and so on. And so we can look at those values, we can talk about them, we can suggest that these are ones that students should consider, or might want to consider, but at the same time leave it up to each individual to choose for themselves. An education then in relation to values becomes more a drawing out rather than a putting in. You know the old um, uh, saying of Socrates, education is not an empty box waiting to be filled, but a light waiting to be ignited. Education is drawing out, not just stuffing an empty head full of information but seeing that there's a potential, going back to the seed analogy, waiting to blossom and flourish. And the role of the teacher then is more to provide the right environment, and within that environment, the child can blossom and grow, rather than trying to force feed something. So what that means is that values education perhaps requires values-based education. We're looking not just at the content, the what, but we're also looking at the how, the way in which teaching is carried out. So a values-based environment. I may have a subject matter which relates specifically to values, but if the way in which it's teached, being, being taught, if the environment in which it's being taught is not based on values, then that content itself will not be effective. Actions speak louder than words. If the teacher is busy saying smoking is bad for you, but is smoking, <laughs> which one is the child going to remember? I think we all find that we 
our actions have more impact than the words. And so what that suggests is that we need to live by, we need to espouse, we need to implement those values, messages, not just talk about them. I think it was St. Augustine, was it St. Augustine, um, who said to his, uh, his followers, go out and preach the gospel, and if you have to, use words. Go out and preach the gospel, and if you have to, use words. So the main method of, of, of teaching is through action, not through talking. Talking is just a supplement. And so I can express, I can give a values message to students much more effectively by example, by modeling them, not just by talking about them and having a nice set of rules saying, you must be honest, you must be respectful, you must, you must, you must, you must. Much better to live by them, to demonstrate them, rather than just talking about them. So to have a set of values, perhaps, more than a, a set of, of um, rules. And what that means is that teachers need to start off by looking at their own values, first of all. If I'm going to be a model for values, or to attempt to be a model for values at least. I so living values then, one can say, is a way of looking at education that promotes values-based learning communities and places the search for meaning and purpose at the heart of education. Meaning and purpose obviously are big topics that you can spend a lot of time talking about, but um, without dumbing it down too much, perhaps one can say that values are an important part of the meaning that we find in our lives and, and purpose. If we find that, if we experience love, respect, honesty in our lives, it is more likely to, our life is more likely to have a sense of meaning, to be meaningful, and that there is some purpose, some reason for us to get out of bed. If we are not respected, if we are being constantly cheated and, and there is no love in our lives, we may well think, well, what's it all about? What's, what's, the, what's the meaning of, of my life? So Living Values Education, there's a, a group of not-for-profit volunteer educators around the, around the world and there's support from, from um, UNESCO. Living Values Education has been picked up in many different countries around the world and what we do is run um, participatory workshops which focus really on creating a values-based learning environment. What can teachers do to help create an atmosphere of values to ensure that values underpin all, part of, all parts of the way a school operates, that values are expressed in everything that the school as a community does and lives by to whatever extent possible. So um, we've produced some books which are floating around or examples of some of them and materials for values education on some specific values. And here are the values that are covered in these particular books. And of course there are other values too, but these are perhaps some quite um, important values that, that um, one can start with without overburdening the curriculum. But of course, one can adopt and work with other values too. And indeed, there are a number of ways of going about this. But within these particular books and within this approach, um, this is what one can find, a series of activities relating to reflection, discussion, some stories, some role play, some artistic activities, group work, songs and games. And the idea really being that one can bring values alive, so to speak. One can create an experience of values and create a values-based learning environment through using these different methods. Reflection, calming down, being still, being present being more conscious and aware of what's going on, what is driving my life, what is 
motivating particular actions. Discussion, talking about things. What are the consequences of living by particular values? What are the consequences if I don't express a particular set of values? What, um, what if you like, are the paths that a set of values will take me down? You know, we, we have choices. If I make a choice and go this way, what values influence that decision and where does that road lead to? If another set of values guide my life and I take another path, where does that road lead to? What are the consequences there? Stories. Very often we can find over the centuries that values messages are very powerfully expressed in stories. Different things that have happened um, described in stories. Role play is a great chance to enact a story with a with a, a values message or theme within it and again gives the chance to express those values through the role play and then perhaps to think about what that meant what it felt like artistic activities of course are a vehicle for values songs and games so these are the books they've um, been published in a dozen languages or so the website has quite a lot of information and some extracts from the books. And these are some of the kinds of benefits which people have found in bringing a values-based approach into um, learning, into, into school. Students tend to be more engaged, less absenteeism, better learning outcomes, it may seem counterintuitive and, and some people will resist having uh, values being given a more prominent role. They say, oh, there's no time to talk about values. We need to focus on passing the exams. We need to learn more yeah. history. But actually, often the result is that there's a better academic outcome when there is a focus on a more values-based school environment. Better social and emotional well-being, classroom relationships and environments tend to improve, teacher professional practice and uh, parent engagement has also often been found to increase too when values are given a role. So six impacts which have been seen from values education and I think these were nicely summarized in uh, some research done in, uh, in Australia. Greater values consciousness, teachers think more deeply about their, the values that they model or live by. Greater self-worth, empathy, responsible personal behavior. And that's been particularly effective on students who are at risk, sometimes uh, marginalized, um, migrant workers, people who have been street children or um, have had a traumatized upbringing, exposed to drugs and, and, and other um, very difficult environments, they are particularly responsive um, to a, a values-based school environment. Uh, and agency, I think, has also been seen to be one of the outcomes. So individuals having a greater capacity to act autonomously, to make decisions for themselves, to be more in charge, if you like, of their own uh, lives and to act on the values that they, they choose to, to live by. And that's particularly effective, I think, when there's a service learning dimension, when there are particular projects that students can engage in. So a social outreach project that enables students to go off and do something that expresses the particular values that they found to be important, that really seems to um, have a, a meaningful effect. So values education again helps build positive connections and relationships, improved behavior within the classroom, and 
transformation is perhaps at the heart of education in the sense that our brains physically change through education and the things that we learn as we grow up. We learn to do particular things and, and that is reflected in, in, in the brain. So education is a transformative experience. We want to learn something, we want to grow, we want to become more learned, more skilled, more able and so on. Um, and that, I think, has, has been seen to be particularly the case in, a, in relation to a, a values-based <coughs> environment. And the role of reflection, I think, has been found also to be very supportive of that, to pause, to sit, to think, to reflect on what's going on in our lives within what we're doing is a particular contributor to that process of, of personal change and development. Um, the unreflecting life is, is not worth living, someone said, you know, to, we need to sit and think about what's going on. And lastly, yes, academic achievement and attainment. A deeper engagement in learning, a deeper connection to learning when the environment is one which reflects and expresses different values. So let's explore values, experience them, express them, and that should be an enjoyable process. Values are for living, not just for talking about, not just for theorizing, for rhetoric, but something that we need to bring into practice in our daily lives. Thank you. <laughs>